For the last 20 years, the Premier League has been run by a selected few, a so-called Big Six. Manchester City, Manchester United, Tottenham, Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal. These clubs to this day seem to be the end all and be all of the Premier League. And rightly so. In the last 20 seasons of the league, they have ruled with an iron fist. Once in a while, a mid-table team assembles a decent enough team to push one of them out. This has happened a few times during those years, with Leicester City, Newcastle United, Everton, Aston Villa, West Ham, Southampton, Bolton and Blackburn. A great indicator that the league is competitive and with the right environment, a club can push to really compete with the big boys. But as you can see, it's rare and usually takes one of the top six to have a terrible season to even allow others a sniff. But the most exclusive is to finish in the coveted top four. Hey everyone, it's Raf. Before we get into it, let me ask you for a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button for me. I'm trying to hit 5k subs by the end of the year. So when I mentioned how rare it is finishing in the top six for any team outside of these lot, in the same 20 years of the big six domination, there's another feat that's even as rare as Spurs winning a trophy finishing in the top four. If your team is not on this list, they simply don't make it into the top four. In 20 years, let me tell you how many teams have managed to crack that top four. Everton, Leicester City. That's it. That's the list. In 20 seasons, only two teams. At the start of the 2018-19 season, Leicester City had odds of 5,000 to 1, then won the title with the 6 lowest points of any champion in Premier League history. Not that their fans should care about that one bit. It's cruel how things can change in football. But something is happening. Since Leicester's heroics and David Moyes' brilliance, Newcastle United finished the 2022-23 season in fourth place, breaking the top four monopoly. But I hear all of you haters already saying, are they just another Leicester or Everton? No, there's something different this time. There's oil money and then there's a blueprint. With the dough, attracting the best players to Newcastle can easily be sustained to maintain their presence in the top four. Challenging the top six clubs in transfer fees, wages, and even more importantly, a top class backroom staff. Departments like coaches, football directors, and medical staffs are what keeps teams competing at the highest level season after season. And you see that in the new crop of teams regularly challenging the top teams when it comes to putting talent on the pitch. Teams like Brighton, Brentford and Aston Villa are striking the balance of punching above their weight, narrowing the financial gulf between themselves and the big spending elites. Using rational structures, smart management and shrewd player recruitment. For a team like Brighton, if you come for their players, they will sell them for a handsome fee. Then they'll use a fraction of that money to replace the player with even better effects. Even if you poach their manager, their next gaffer will do an even better job. For the team that finished right behind them in 7th, Aston Villa went from fear and relegation to under the elite coach Unai Emery going back to Europe after 13 years. If Brighton and Aston Villa can compete with the big boys when it comes to club structure, management and player recruitment, the team that cracked the top four are going to be doing way more than that, but with a nitro boost on their back, aka Arab money. So if they're able to maintain this growth, don't be surprised if they emulate Man City in success. At least we know St. James's Park will host unbelievable Champions League nights. Unlike... Never mind. Till next time. Peace.